Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I join my colleague from Kansas and many others who are going to be on the floor today in full and total support of one of our most steadfast allies, the State of Israel. I also stand here today to strongly condemn, condemn in the strongest terms, the terrorist attacks perpetrated on Israel by Hamas. Since the initial attack on October the 7th, we've lost 31 American citizens. Other Americans remain unaccounted for and are being held hostages. More than 1,400 Israelis have been killed and countless families have been left without a home or without their loved ones. This is an unacceptable tragedy and recalls far too familiar memories of terrorist attacks in our own nation's history. We remember vividly the devastating and hostile attacks that ISIS deployed and can clearly see the parallels between their terroristic actions and the wrath that Hamas is now perpetrating. Now is the time to unabashedly and unapologetically support Israel, and I do. It's also time to support Israel's right to defend themselves and their people. The United States and Israel has a long, long history of demonstrating mutual respect and allegiance to one another. This dates back to 1948, when President Truman became the first world leader to recognize the Jewish state. Since then, Israel has displayed unmatched loyalty and provided critical support to our country in the Middle East. Israel has stood beside us in some of our darkest hours. And now, as friends do, we will do the same for them. It is imperative that Congress takes action now and provide the support that Israel needs in the face of these terrorist attacks, both to properly defend themselves but also to provide the humanitarian resources needed for those whose lives have been decimated by a group that shows no mercy towards civilians, many of whom are women and children. Our country must do all that it can within our power to rescue American hostages and return them to safety. This has to be met with increased urgency because time is of the essence. I'm afraid the longer we wait, the sadder the stories, especially for those hostages who are in severe need of medical attention. We must also make certain that the $6 billion in frozen assets that the Biden administration planned to send to Iran in September remains frozen. It is incomprehensible to me that the Biden administration made the announcement they were going to unfreeze $6 billion to Iran that they would do that on September the 11th of this year. Additionally, it is imperative that the Biden administration finally strengthens and enforces U.S. sanctions on the Iranian regime, which is raking in billion dollars, the Iranian regime is raking in billions of dollars in illicit oil sales. It's past time to get tough on Iranian oil and to stop the regime from skirting our U.S. sanctions. Iran is selling 1.4 billion barrels of oil per day this year and using these proceeds to, see what we, to fund what we just saw over the last several weeks. These murderous actions of terrorist groups throughout the region, and they fund their own military at the same time. It should surprise no one that Iran, the world leader in state-sponsored terrorism, was heavily involved in this attack and that they continue to support the unjustifiable actions of Hamas. The leaders of the Senate Forest Relations Committee have put forth a resolution of which I am an original co-sponsor and support strongly, as do many of us. This resolution declares that Congress will stand with Israel. It reaffirms Israel's right to self-defense. It condemns Hamas and Iran and calls on the Biden administration to further impose sanctions on Iran. With the support of 99 senators, once passed, this will send a very almost unanimous message to the world that acts of terrorism and violence will not be tolerated or go unpunished. I've been encouraged by President Biden's response following the attacks on Israel. However, 
President Biden's time in office has been defined by a level of, in my view, passiveness and ambiguity that has emboldened our adversaries and it has lacked the strength that is required of a superpower. With that being said, this is not the time for us to fight among ourselves. One of our strongest allies is under attack, and a nation as strong as ours must display a united front as well as call these attacks on Israel exactly what they are, an act of terrorism. There is no doubt that the continued assault on Israel creates a seismic, seismic shift in our foreign policy. Just a few weeks ago on this very floor, I warned about the uneasy closeness that was cultivating betw between our adversaries. Nations that shun our values and reject democracy are finding refuge with each other and stand in direct opposition to our ideals and our way of life. The connection between these countries, Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, cannot be ignored and only further underscores the importance of strengthening our own military capabilities. We need to be providing military aid for Israel that will serve to not only re reinforce our ally, but also invest directly back in our own defense. And we will serve to re-energize our defense industrial base by restoring the arsenal of democracy that defines our leadership as the United States of America. Moving forward, we must act decisively and lead in the way that America has done before in times of emergency and adversity. This is the United States of America, the greatest country on earth. We have the capacity and the obligation to defend our allies as they face unjustified aggression from adversaries. These attacks on Israel are brutal beyond comprehension and have led to the slaying, as I said before, of innocent families, women, children. It is incumbent upon us to show steadfast uh, support for Israel and to reiterate how military aid from the United States is in the best interest of both of our nations. The world is watching and expecting the United States to lead. I encourage my colleagues to recognize the magnitude of this moment, which many of us have been expressing here on the floor today, join together in our unwavering support of Israel. That I yield back.